Well, hello once again, everybody. Hopefully you guys are doing okay. This is the very last video that we're making, and I hope that's true not just for geometry, but for school overall. I am kind of glad to be getting this spring semester over with, and hopefully when I see you guys again in the fall, things will be a lot more closer to normal. Before I get into what's new this week, I want to talk just a little bit about Pepsi the fish. Pepsi's doing okay. I just changed his water again last night. When you guys gave me that fish earlier, I can remember some of you saying that you would be happy to not just care for him during the school year, but also that you were willing to take him home in summer. Now, of course, things have not worked out quite the way we planned with the school year, but if we still have some people that are interested in caring for the fish this summer, I would really appreciate that. And if that happens to be you, I would love it if you would either shoot me an email or you can text me and let me know that, yeah, you'd like to care for the fish over the summer. Then what we can do is arrange to probably get together quickly out at school and I can give you the fish and I've actually bought some new water conditioner and food for it so it should last way more than the summer with that and we can then arrange to have it have a good home over the summer. Originally, I was actually planning to do a major vacation this summer. I was going to head to New Zealand, but that, of course, had to be canceled. I would, however, like to be able to get away at least now and then this summer, and kind of hard to do that when I've got to make sure I'm caring for a fish all the time. So again, if somebody would like to step up and take care of, of Pepsi this summer, that would be a great thing. So now we do need to get on to the last stuff that we actually have to learn this year. And of course, for the past month or so, we've been talking about circles, and we've learned all about how different segments and lines that could intersect in circles interact with each other. Last of those that we're going to be talking about is what happens when you have secant or tangent segments that intersect. Remember a tangent was just always something that touched a circle at exactly one point, and a secant it always intersected at two points. So in this picture uv would be a tangent and you could either call it ux or uy or xy. However you call it, that bottom line is going to be a secant. What we're going to be learning this week basically boils down to two quick properties. And the first of those I have written here, it says if two secants intersect outside a circle, then they always satisfy a property. And it looks harder as a formula than it is when I just show you what it means. It says a times a plus b equals c times c plus d. Basically, the way to remember that is that you can always multiply the part that's outside times the whole thing. And no matter which line I'm looking at, which segment I'm looking at, I'm going to end up getting the same answer. So the outside times the whole thing equals the outside of the other one times the whole thing there. Outside times whole equals outside times whole. So what you're going to see are problems where you have secants that are intersecting and you're supposed to find what's missing. So we need to solve for x in this picture. And again, what you want to do is think about outside times whole equals outside times whole. So here on the first of the segments, the outside part is 9. The whole thing is 20 plus 9 or 29. And then for the other segment, the outside part's 10, and the whole thing is x plus 10. So we got 261 equals 10x plus 100. If you solve that, you end up getting 16.1 for how long x has to be. Again, outside times whole equals outside times whole. So take a second and see if you can figure out this answer.
And the numbers involved get kind of big, but it is just 8 times 8 plus x equals 12 times the whole thing. 12 plus 20 gives you 32. And again, you distribute everything out, you solve it, and it turns out this time x has to be 40. Something I do want to warn you about is that the pictures on problems like this aren't necessarily drawn totally right. You know, here that definitely doesn't look like it's 40, but if you did have 8 outside, it would have to be 40 on the inside. And one more problem that I want you to take a minute and see if you can figure out how big x would be here. On this one, it looks like things are actually drawn a little bit more accurately. We would have 4 times 4 plus x equals 3 times 3 plus 5 gives you 8. And so you got to solve 16 plus 4x equals 24. If you work that out, x is going to end up equaling 2. And again, the key rule is outside times whole equals outside times whole. And the other rule really is just a variation on that. It says if a tangent segment and a secant segment intersect, then they always satisfy this property, a squared equals b times b plus c. Now, if you look at that second part, that still is really just saying outside times whole. And basically, that's what a squared is, too, because the whole thing's outside, so it still is just outside times whole, outside times whole. It does turn out that for the tangent, what you're basically doing is just the tangent squared, and that equals for the secant part outside times whole. So here's an example of how you might use it. We have x for our tangent, and then the segments 7 and 42 set up in the secant part. And that means I'd have x squared equals 7 times 49, 7 plus 42. That gives me x squared equals 343. So my answer must be the square root of 343. And it turns out that's a little more than 18 and a half, and that would be my answer. So let's see if you guys can figure out what would happen with 7, 5, and x. And again, it's nothing particularly nice for the answer, but we are going to have x squared equals 5 times 12. So x squared equals 60. If you do the square root, you end up with about 7.75. One more quick example we'll look at here. This time we've got 3x, and then the tangent is 6. Again, on the secant part, I do outside times whole, 3 times 3 plus x. That's going to equal 6 squared, so 9 plus 3x equals 36. You subtract and then divide, and it turns out that x must be 9. So your very last quiz is going to have a couple of problems like each of those things we just went through. It will also have a few review questions that make sure that you've learned most of the stuff from this chapter on circles. You do, for example, want to know the terms that are used to describe the various segments and lines that come up with circles, things like radius, diameter, chord, secant, and tangent. You had this very picture that we did in the very first section of this chapter, and just like then, I'm going to ask you a couple of those things on your last quiz here. You also want to know about the different kinds of angles and arcs that come up when you're dealing with circles. Remember, a central angle always has exactly the same measure as its intercepted arc. An inscribed angle that's clear across the circle is always half as big. So like if I told you that, for example, let's say that 
arc CD was 100 degrees, I would know that angle CAD would also be 100, but angle CED would have to be 50. It's got to be half as much. One other thing that it's useful to know is the difference between a major arc and a minor arc. Again, if I said that CD was 100, then the blue arc, CED, I'd subtract from 360 degrees, so it would have to be 260. So again, a couple of review questions, but mostly your quiz will be how those secants and tangents fit together. And that really is it for geometry class. Most of you have done great through this whole online process. I've actually been really pleased with how most of you have kept up with things. And of course, you can check JMC to see how you're doing. Everybody's going to pass, and most of you are going to have actually about the best grade that you've had all year just doing the online stuff, which is awesome. So we're going to wish you a good summer for now. Hopefully everything will go well with you over the summer, and hopefully we will actually be back to a normal school year when we get into the fall. Take care, and we will see you all then.